Today's video is going to be a little different than what we normally do. We figured it would be a good time to answer some questions that we've received from subscribers and also just discuss our overall experiences here in Alaska since we've been here for about eight months or so. So first, here's a little bit of our background. I'm Eric. And I'm Ariel. We're both originally from the Bay Area in California. We moved up to Oregon in 2014 and spent four years there. We basically had our dream property. So we were happy there. We uh, were full time in our careers and we actually just came to the point where we decided that we were just way too busy. We wanted to make a big change and that's how we ended up here in Alaska. Our main goal was to be debt free and to have more time to do the things we wanted to do. And that's kind of where the name came from. We're living simple here in Alaska. So the first section we're gonna get into is questions we have received from subscribers. Number one question we get is how do you guys make a living? We've been able to put ourselves in the position where we have minimal expenses and we don't need to generate a large income. With that being said, we have some expenditures. So with savings, investing, and some other small side incomes, we've been able to live this lifestyle. Next question, are you off grid and how do you have internet? Okay, yes, we are off grid. We live in a small cabin. We have solar power and we have no plumbing, anything like that, and we have an outhouse. We get our internet through our mobile hotspot on our phone. We're lucky enough to live in an area where we do get pretty good service from 4G on our cell phone, and we use the hotspot to power our laptop. So that's our internet. We don't have any wires in or out from our house. The next question we got was from Big Dirty, and it is, is the physical demand harder on us here living off grid than it was back home in Oregon? That's a great question, and the answer to it is actually no, which may be surprising. Back home in Oregon, we had wood as our only heat source, so we're pretty familiar with chopping wood every year. And I will say that's pretty physically demanding, but if it's, you know, the standard, you just get used to it and you expect to do that every year. Right now we're still in winter, so even though we've been out doing things, we haven't really been building as much as we planned to this summer, so I do expect that to pick up quite a bit. And the main reason why we actually worked harder in Oregon is because we both worked full time had a farm and did lots of other stuff. So we were getting up hours before work and working hours after we got home from work and really never had much time left to do anything else than what was on the schedule. All right, so next question. Can you see the Northern Lights from your house? Uh, the answer to that is yes, we can. And we have seen them, I think quite a bit. It is gonna get better seeing them further north towards Fairbanks, but where we are from our front porch, we get amazing shows of the Northern Lights when they come out. What was it like when you saw them for the first time? When I saw them for the first time, it was pretty amazing. And they never get old. It's really cold usually out when you're looking at them, but they are totally worth it. And it is a once in a lifetime thing that I think everyone should see. So next question is what type of wildlife have we seen since we've been living here? So we've seen everything from foxes to coyotes, eagles, salmon, porcupine, moose, caribou, but we have yet to see wolves or bears. Next question, how close are you to Mount Denali? So we're about a hundred miles from it. If you're just seeing it and you're looking at it, it looks like it's right there because it's so big. You know, it's 20,000 feet, biggest mountain in North America, but we are about a hundred miles from it. Next question, which is a big one. Do you get paid to live here in Alaska? We haven't talked about this much and the answer is yes. There's a permanent fund dividend and that's through, I believe it's through like the state's oil revenue. We haven't talked about it because we're not residents and we won't be residents until we've lived here for 12 months. We actually won't even be eligible for that PFD until 2020 and it's paid out late in the year. So it's just not really, we're going to live here for two years before that ever even affects us. But yes, that is true. So the next one is, is Alaska what you thought it would be? The so being that we've never been to Alaska, when we first got here, it definitely was, it did meet my expectation and exceed it as far as nature goes and the beauty. It's just lovely here, especially winter for us. That was a really cool season just to see all the snow, nice crystals. I really enjoyed that. As far as differing, I definitely thought, and I know there is a lot of wildlife and I know there's a risk of attacks and things like that, but I had legitimately thought that we were going to be out in the wilderness and a bear was going to eat me. I just thought when I was going to be scared going to the outhouse and I even told Eric that before we moved here I was super scared to move here because I thought bears were everywhere. And again I'm not downplaying that but where we live at our house it's just not like that. I don't have to you know watch my back every <laughs> everything I do outside. So Eric is Alaska what you thought it was going to be? Probably not. You see something online and you and you know you look at it on the map and you think it's going to be one way. It is beautiful. The only thing that kind of took me by surprise was how many places you just can't get here. There's not a lot of roads here, so 
that was kind of a big shock and you can get lost really fast out here and we that's the one thing i probably did not realize about alaska so next question is what was it like transitioning from living in a normal house to living off grid so our previous house was 1700 square feet and this one is under 500 including the loft but it actually feels huge and we have the connex so we have plenty of space to store other things and transitioning to being off grid truthfully it was really, I, mean, I don't want to say it was really easy, but it just wasn't a big deal because we really consciously knew what we were getting into. So even though there's learning curves, we just knew, you know, we're not going to have water right at the beginning when we moved in, it was a dry cabin. We didn't have hot water and it, some stuff's inconvenient, but it's just not, it's not to us a big deal. It just takes a little more time. When we lived in our old house and the power would go out, we couldn't run our well and we obviously didn't have electricity. And at that time I really realized I didn't like being so reliant on it because I would just flick the switches, you know, and I, I realized I prefer that we are conscious of the energy we're using and the water we're consuming. So Eric, how has it been transitioning to off-grid and tiny house living? Uh, honestly, for me, I would say it was extremely easy and actually a lot of fun. Ever since I can remember, the funnest thing that we've ever done or when I was younger would just be going out camping with friends. I mean, that's what we would do when we had a vacation time or anything like that we'd be out camping. So this is just like a, pretty much a lifelong camping trip, except you have more water conveniences here, like a shower and an outhouse. So it's not bad at all. That's a great answer. And I wanted to add that the outhouse is, to me, it's the least thing I think about. It's like not a big deal at all. So I do think that people can adjust to that pretty easily. So next question, what is the coldest temperature we've been in here in Alaska and how did it feel? We were in negative 30 or so. I can't say we were really outside doing much, but it is cold. I think the biggest thing you probably notice is when you breathe in, you can feel, you can feel how cold it is. And I think it's also really cold on your hands, especially when you go to touch metal objects, it can kind of like instantly freeze your hands. I feel like we're on the same page on this, but I pretty much now have a new definition of cold and I'd say it's like 10 degrees or 15 degrees and below. Negative 10 is different than negative 30, but those temperatures are really cold and you can definitely deal with them. You just put on clothes and you can go out and do your normal business. But if you didn't have clothes, I don't think you would last very long. So in some aspects, it definitely is as extreme as you would think, but everyone pretty much just goes about their normal business and it really hasn't been too bad. So Eric, how did you deal with the lack of sun in winter and avoiding cabin fever? Okay, so I think our shortest day was a little over three hours of sunlight, and I don't even know if it even got sunny that day. So it's pretty weird, I'm not going to lie, you know, you, you sleep a lot longer, you go to bed earlier and you wake up later, so you definitely get to catch up on some sleep. And we just tried to get outside. I mean, we ran through a lot of batteries in our headlamps and a lot of propane in our lantern, and we ran the generator a lot because we weren't getting any solar power. But all in all, it's really not that bad, but I'll tell you, we are looking forward to these longer days. This is... Probably one of the biggest questions is, is it more expensive to live in Alaska? It's kind of a yes and a no. I'll give you some of the stuff that I think is cheaper here in Alaska. First thing is buying a piece of property. It's cheaper here than where we lived, for sure. Car registration is cheaper and gas is cheaper. I think we're paying about two sixty-five a gallon right now. Of course, like Eric said, it obviously depends on the region you live, but from where we're from, certain things are cheaper. Now let's talk about what's more expensive. Food is hugely more expensive here. There's some things that are a couple dollars more than we were ever used to paying for them. And I'm sure that's just because of how they have to get here, how far away they are from the lower 48. It has been really hard for us because we were really reliant on our garden before. And you know we just didn't have time to grow anything, nor can you really grow anything here in the winter. So there's really just an absence of fresh produce in the winter. Also, I think because it is such a big state, a lot of people travel a lot and it doesn't seem like you're really traveling a lot because I think you get used to it. But I do think you, if you live here, you're probably gonna put a lot more miles on your vehicle. So I'm just gonna wrap that in as being more expensive. Another thing is when we moved here and we went to switch car insurance companies, our insurance went way up. So vehicle insurance is more expensive here in Alaska. Now that we talked about specific things that were cheaper and more expensive, we were going to discuss shipping, which is a huge thing here. You'll find out if you move here too. We weren't huge online shoppers, but every once in a while we did get something online and you will find that some stuff just doesn't ship here. It's yep. just not even an option. The, some of the stuff that does 
is incredibly expensive, like several hundred dollars just to get one thing. And we didn't want to get Amazon Prime because we didn't want that extra bill on us. But even if you do have Amazon Prime, it, you do not get the two day shipping. We have ordered stuff from them and it takes it takes about three weeks to get here. So what we do in that situation is we just plan ahead. I mean, we have projects coming up that we're not gonna start for another month and we've already ordered our products. Yeah, one of the reasons we don't have Amazon Prime is you can almost always click the free shipping. So to us, that's really not a big deal. Yep. So when we moved up here, we, we could only take a certain amount of things. We were really loaded down. And I, I kind of feel like we maybe sold some stuff that I would have brought in. I don't think I realized the scarcity up here, the lack of resources. Just when you compare it to being down in the lower 48, there's just a lot more agriculture. There's more stores you can run to. So all in all, you learn to live with it, but it is a little bit tricky to adjust to. I think it was for us as well. And we're hoping to do a lot of gardening this year, so we shouldn't have to rely too much on the grocery store. So the next question is, what is one piece of advice you would offer somebody if they're looking to do something kind of like we did, move out of state, downsize, and live a more sustainable life? Although I would recommend doing research, at the same time, we feel that it is best to just do it because sometimes there's a lot of you know hesitation and fear that something won't go as planned and I can almost guarantee it won't go as planned but it's still worth trying to do it and just making it happen because 10 years down the road you may be like dang it I wish I would have done that I would say just put a plan into action and just get going and start start it if that's something you're really looking to do yeah you know and that's kind of how we've lived you know the sooner we make a mistake the sooner we won't make that mistake again and we'll learn from it and we'll be able to do something new we wouldn't be where we are today if we didn't take the big chances that we took eric has a, a motto for our life yeah we're not good at anything but we're all right at just about everything yeah so it's worth trying lots of things and failing at a lot of them <laughs> so with that being said you know, there. I know we only show like a certain part of our life and we don't always show all the negative things. I think you guys have seen that there's been a huge learning curve for us with the snow and snow removal specifically, but there have been a few things like financially we didn't expect we're going to come up with our truck and just extra things we bought like a chainsaw, the snow machine. So it is a really good idea to have have more than you think you're going to need. I mean, you can sit there on pen and paper and you can you know, calculate everything you're going to need to yeah. move and downsize and do all that. Double it because, I mean, you're going to need the extra funds because stuff's going to go wrong and you're going to need different things. It's always going to be unaccounted expenses, always. And we just kind of planned for that. But you never know when it's going to happen. And test your options. I mean, there's been so many times where we thought, like, you know, okay, something broke. I need this. I need to buy this. And then we've waited on a few days and we decided that, you know what? We didn't need it. Yeah, I don't I don't think we really need that. Let's try to get by without it. That's and that's what we've been trying to do. And lastly, we were going to wrap it up with our future plans here at our property. I guess animal wise, we have bees coming next month and we have 30 chicks we're picking up next month. So we'll have chickens again soon and we've raised those before, so we're not too worried about them, but it is our first time keeping bees. Well, more plans are going to be hunting, fishing. Those are gonna be our main things this summer. I mean, we wanna do a lot of it. Um, the more food we can bring in that way, the less food we have to raise here and the less food we have to buy. Also foraging, looking for mushrooms and berries. There's a lot of berry picking here in Alaska. And Eric touched on it, but yes, we do. We have a strong emphasis on being sustainable and no, like no one can be 100% sustainable nowadays. That's not what we're aiming for. But we just believe the food that we can grow here in a sustainable way or harvest is more beneficial to us than what is offered, you know, at your grocery store. So our plans for the future include building a garden, building a, we want to have you know, like a little orchard and we want to put in a greenhouse. There's lots of other things we want to add on, but it's, you know, constantly changing. It's changed a lot just since we've talked about it. And I think the two main key points are doing it in a sustainable manner. So in my opinion, that doesn't mean running out and buying pellet feed for my chickens, but trying to get them to eat what's here and growing food for them. And the second point is, I think a big one, we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. We quite literally did that in every single aspect at our old place, just always constantly trying to do more and more and more. And I think that's a great way, like Eric mentioned, to learn. It's also a great way to just really like set yourself up for failure. And I just, we don't really want to do that. We want time to be what we have the most. And when you have livestock, that really devotes a lot of your time every day to those animals. Yeah, we want to be able to 
enjoy everything we're doing. We don't want any burdens here. We don't want to be like, oh, I got to do this today. I got to do that today. I got to do this when I get home. No, we're just going to kind of keep it simple. And I think another big thing for our future plans is working out on the new property um, and kind of getting that driveway cleared in and harvesting a lot of firewood. We went through four cords this year. So our goal this summer is to have about eight cords chopped and stacked ready to go for the year. That's a lot of wood. <laughs> so we just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who's following, watching, commenting. You know, we really appreciate it. Our whole thing when we set out to do this was to basically give back, so to speak, because we take a lot of we, you know, we've learned a lot from online um, videos, researching, reading, things like that. So we figured we just offer our experience, our story, and sometimes you can't even find stuff online that we've been able to do. So we're just trying to share that. Yeah, we've, we use YouTube a lot. I can't tell you how many times I've been, you know, greasy from working on something or we've been bloody from processing an animal and we got our phone in this hand and we got a knife in this hand and we're just trying to, to learn something. So this is just our way of giving back. Yeah, so again, big thank you for all the watchers. See ya. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> we're at the back of our property and we're gonna see if she can get the snow machine by herself back to the house. And we're just gonna say that this snow is getting really hard to ride in because it's melting. So we'll see what happens. So much faith. I have faith. <laughs> hey, stand up is my only advice. <laughs> I'm gonna throw you off the back of it. I'm ready. So I think basically it was a lot. So, so, so. How is Alaska differ or compare? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? You're like, so we haven't ever visited Alaska until we visited Alaska. <laughs> we have yet to see bears here in Alaska and we've yet to see Wolves. We also haven't seen whales. You want me to say that? You're listening to everything we haven't seen, right? Eric! Just say what we've seen! Can you just say what we've seen? This is you! Hey. My neck hurts and you're being... Yeah, is that why you're leaning away from me? Yeah, because my... No, I can't lean that way. That really hurt my...